As you know, we've been trying to make the best speakers possible for 40 years, and for 25 years, we've made only analog active technology uh, with phase compensation and damping system. So we make the most accurate possible sound, and then we put our speakers in the room, and obviously the room contributes to the listening environment that is not perfect. We've been thinking for a long time on ways to reduce the pressure and to absorb sound instead of creating it with the same technology we use in our speakers. 20 years ago, we did a study with the University of Geneva on whether such a thing would be possible, and the conclusion was, yes, it is possible. Four years ago, in 2013, we got a grant from the Swiss Confederation to work with two academic partners, the Polytechnical School in Lausanne, the well-known EPFL, and the University of Geneva, to try and come out with innovation and a product that has a commercial prospect to it. And in 2015, we started selling our AVA with quite some success. To understand how it works, it's important to understand that sound is acoustic pressure, that's pressure going up and down, but there is also an associated acoustic velocity, those are molecules of air going back and forth with the differential of pressure. The ratio between the acoustic pressure and the acoustic velocity is called the acoustic impedance. And what we're doing in front of the AVA is we're imposing a very low acoustic impedance. In normal free fields, impedance is 400 pascals per meter per second. When it's functioning, the AVA will impose an impedance of 150 in front of its grill. This means if it's positioned in a corner where the impedance is a lot higher, it lacks as a sink that will suck in all the low frequencies between 15 and 150 hertz towards it. That's the frequency range it was designed to absorb. The acoustic impedance will go from 150 in front of the AVA up to about 400 free field values over a distance of one to one and a half meters. So you should imagine the portion of sphere about one to one and a half meters distance from the center, which is the AVA, as being the equivalent absorption area of the AVA. So all the low frequencies that will enter this sphere will be absorbed by the AVA. The AVA is about 0.2 square meters and the surface of this sphere goes up to four, five, six, even up to 10 square meters in some conditions. So we can calculate or extrapolate the equivalent absorption area of the AVA that goes up to 20, 25 times its own size, even higher in certain circumstances. The efficiency of the AVA will obviously depend on where it's positioned in the room. If it's positioned where there's no pressure, it won't absorb anything. If it's positioned in a very high pressure zone, it's going to be extremely efficient. The position in which the AVA is most efficient is in the most rigid corners of the room. The corners is where you can absorb all of the room modes, whether they're lengthwise, widthwise, or heightwise. And the rigid corners or the rigid walls are those that contribute most to low frequency reflections. So although it's a very complicated device, in practice, it's very easy to position them in the right place in your room.